All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Unified MMA 48, and that goes down on December the 16th. An intriguing bantamweight bout with Morgan Rhines and Tisha Guthrow getting out there and testing skills. And always good talking to Tisha before these big fights. How's everything going with the training in general for this one here, man? Good, man. Camp's been um, longer than usual i guess you can say my last couple camps were kind of more short notice four weeks three weeks um this one i think i had a full nine weeks to prepare for it so um it's been long and hard ready to get in there and um eat some bad food (laughs) so it's interesting you say that do you almost like prefer one camp duration over the other like you always seem like a guy that just like really stays consistently ready to go so do you prefer like the shorter camps or was this camp almost good because you had like a little bit longer to kind of like ramp up for it i kind of like five weeks of camp i kind of like this camp was really long preparing for it um and just thinking about it a lot but uh to be honest, it doesn't really like matter. I think I like I like the longer camps when I get higher higher level. Like when I get to the UFC, probably longer camps would be more ideal to prepare for my opponents. But um, at this lower level, I think five weeks is good. Five six weeks, no problem. Yeah, and a good way to end out the year just with this being like a big foray for unified MMA into like the GTA and it being like the big promotion right now throughout. Canada like what was the I guess temperament when the bout offer initially came your way um I was totally down so first uh we talked to Unified and um I signed a three fight deal with them so that was good uh they said they're gonna be ma- match me up well I was actually supposed to get a title fight my first uh fight but um Noah Ali said no he um I guess he's having a kid and didn't have time to train I think he's a little shook. I would be too. Um, but uh, so then they gave me Morgan Bynes, I think his name, last name is. Yeah. Um, I was a little skeptical on taking it because I was supposed to play him last year and pulled out. So um, still got, what, almost two weeks left. So I'm hoping he stays in shape and doesn't get hurt and ends up showing up this time. So, uh, no, I was pumped. I was like, it's a good fight. I'm fighting the southpaw. He's a striker. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So my game. Yeah, and it's good you brought that up because I did see that post you had there. Like you shouted out the management team, like you shouted out Jake Sage and, you know, the Daniel Rubenstein team overall there. So I guess within that three fight deal, would the ideal, I, I'm not overlooking this fight, obviously, but would the ideal panning out be to get like a big statement win here and then to maybe, you know, next have that title fight? I know you were saying they were looking to get you in there right from the rip, but do you think that would time out well with, like, the kind of timeline Noah Ali gave, or are you really even thinking about that? Yeah, it was perfect. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I guess they said uh, if Noah Ali doesn't take this fight after I smash Morgan, then um, they're going to strip him and then just give me a title shot, find someone else, and we'll fight for it, and then I'll body that guy, and it'll be unified champ. That's ideally what I'm looking at. Yeah, well, that would be a good feather in the cap for sure, especially like what I was talking about with like Unified making, you know, such big waves throughout the country as of late. And yeah, it seems like there's some good representation from a lot of the local fighters. Like I was talking to Bobby Poulter the other day, and you can really, I guess, see like the fingerprints of like Rob Vivers kind of recently being in like the matchmaker position. Like Unified obviously always puts on great cards, but you can tell like, I guess the localized presence, like you can tell like an informed person was like really recruiting the talent for this one. Yeah, I think it's big. Um, like it's good for Unify that they got Rob. He's a good matchmaker. I've worked with him when I worked with BTC. But uh, I found BTC didn't give him the freedom to matchmake the fights properly or really do what he wanted to do. But now I see he's with Unified, and I think it's perfect. Like, I think uh, for him and them, it worked out beautifully. Because now he's bringing all this, all those Ontario guys in. Like, me and Bobby, fucking, not from the same team, but we are. We've been training together for years. Um, yeah, it, now Beaver is going to make some incredible fights. Like, this matchup was perfect for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. And just, you know, I kind of wanted to briefly touch on the last one. Just, I mean, obviously going to talk a lot about this upcoming fight, but I'm just curious to get some insights on the last one because the lone loss you had was under that LFA banner. And when we were talking before that fight there, you were kind of talking about how it would almost feel like a redemptive kind of thing to like win in LFA. And obviously that ended up happening there. So like, did that feel redemptive? Like what was, I guess, the overall feeling you had after that last win? Man, it felt good. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be like on the main card, but not co-main event. And then uh, someone dropped out. Someone couldn't make it over the border. I heard, so they pushed me up to co-main event, which got me real excited. Um, and then just motivated me more to take Buddy out. But um, I actually went in that fight. Not too many people know with a hand injury. I hurt my hand the week before, and I didn't use it until the day of the fight and then in the back room I was actually cracking pads with D-Marks and my hand went numb and I told him and he's like okay let's just wrestle the guy so I couldn't make it as exciting as I wanted to like I really wanted to outstrike him so we wrestled him and we won that was it but it was fucking fun man LFA they treated me well it's such a great show um be nice to get back one more with them before I uh, get to the top league but um unified fuck best league in canada i'd say they uh pump their guys well a lot of eyes will be on me and you found ufc fight pass which is key yeah. yeah i was gonna say that's like a sort of pattern that's been developing for you in like a few of the fights being on that ufc fight pass platform i mean such a great thing for you know fighters trying to like really get their profile out there or bolster their profile that sort of thing and it kind of aligns with what you're talking about to like getting to the big show thereafter. Yeah, no, I won't. I decided after I fought for uh, CFFC, I'm like, I'm not going to go fight on any other organizations unless it's on Fight Pass. I need that. I need people to see what I can do on this worldwide Fight Pass. So I'm like, I'm just going to stick with them. And then whoever wants me, and uh, LFA did, so it was perfect. And then Unified did, so now I'm signed to Unified. And, um get these three wins and see what happens. And you mentioned like Bobby Poulter, like not necessarily being like a quote unquote teammate per se, but just with all the cross training that goes on with the different gyms, it's like you're occupying the spaces a fair bit. And I feel like there's some other people on the card that could fit that description. Like, are you kind of feeling that certain vibe in the room, just everyone preparing for their individual fights and there being like a good atmosphere in the gym? Yeah, hundred percent. Like uh, my boy Gabe, uh, segment. He just got uh, he just got on Unified. He was on that front row card, and um, now we're calling them uh, uh, f- uh, fights off because uh, like their shows keep on falling through. But now Gabe's fighting uh, Dredane on Unified, so that fucking me and him were, were in camp together, and now we're still in camp together. So it feels good, like. I'm, I'm actually really happy he's on it with me. We fucking, we put hard work in me and him since he started to come to our gym. And I, he became my boy, so it's going to be nice fucking getting that win with him. And, um, yeah, the vibes high, man. Me, Bobby, and fucking Gabe, Vlad, uh, Scott Hudson. It's, it's going to be solid. Yeah, you love to see that. And, like, specifically with Gabe, like, a guy who's, like, around your weight category, like, similar kind of build in that sort of sense. So maybe, like, a lot of, like, direct work happening with him, too. Like, obviously good to have guys like Bobby and Scott in the gym, but I would think maybe not as much direct work had with guys like that. No, we we, we don't really touch each other. <laughs> too big of a um, But no, me and Gabe, we've been putting in work this fucking whole year, man. Like, grappling, striking, and... um. He'll, he'll, he'll switch to my opponent like this Monday actually fucking when he told me he's like I'm on the card so we're uh, we like for wrestling we'll team up I gave him Jordan's looks he gave me Morgan's looks cause he fought Morgan and then he, he he'll tell me what Morgan did and how he sees things and you know what I mean just little tips here and there and I'm good at analyzing uh, strikers so I see how Jordan's game is so, and I give him looks like that and see, pick out little things what I think to do and how I think Gabe matches up well with him so just leveling up I'm actually I'm actually happy to have Gabe on the team it's a it's a nice addition yeah I mean definitely a guy that has like a good profile and like if people follow the Canadian MMA scene definitely 
you know, know what he brings to the table there. But I saw an Instagram post you had there where you said KO of the night coming. And I feel like that's the general demeanor you have, like the general approach to these different fights, wanting to put on the highlight reel performances. But I guess how much of that was informed by like the, you know, hand injury before in the last one and mostly like using the wrestling. Like, I guess, what do you feel about all that? Um, yeah, the hand injury sucked, man. I really wanted to strike with this guy because, like, the last guy fought, he was a good striker. Um, good grappler, too, actually. Uh, he was good all around. I thought it was probably, like, on paper, definitely my hardest fight on paper. But, um, as you've seen, it wasn't that hard of a fight. Like, I think I dominated all three rounds. Maybe not dominated, but I definitely beat him all three rounds. He really didn't have too much for me. Um, yeah, I was happy with it. Coaches were happy with it. Yeah, because before we were talking and you seemed to discuss it as like a leveling up kind of fight, like you knew the guy's like resume, what he brought to the table. So did you kind of feel that like, I guess, galvanizing of the confidence? Like not that you're lacking in confidence, but I feel like it just keeps growing as you keep like getting more wins and kind of leveling up in the sport. Yeah, 100%. That um definitely solidified my brain on fucking taking it to the next level. Like when we signed this fight with Morgan, it was like, at first I felt like it was kind of an easier fight I could win, just on paper, 5-5. Five five. But then, like, I had to sit back and think about it, smoke a joint, and, uh, like, really think about it. And I'm like, there's fucking nothing to lose. And, um, in, like, nothing to lose, right? So, obviously, it's coming in a fight. And then, uh, my, like, D-Mark sent me a post he posted saying he's fighting the number one guy in Ontario, and how it was his biggest fight in his career. So I'm like, he's fucking, clearly he's motivated. And a motivated guy that has nothing to lose is a dangerous guy. So at first when I took this fight, I wasn't as motivated. Because I'm like, I'll be able to beat this guy everywhere. Which I still will be. But it made me train a lot harder for this guy. Like, it gave me that extra motivation, right? Like, I wasn't as motivated because I thought I could smoke him. And then seeing that, I'm like, fuck, okay. i got to really smoke him and dominate him. Because on paper, I should dominate, right? I should fucking finish him. But he's going to be hard. But I'm going to I'm gonna finish him. That's it. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting the way that my, my mind works with looking at that. Like, 5-5 five and five isn't a good record. But fuck it, he's got nothing to lose. Yeah, and it's good you're looking at it like that, too. Just like what his mentality is coming in and how that might inform his performance and i'm also noticing that he pro like previously rather fought gabe sagman there so i mean you don't strike me as a guy that would maybe like directly ask like like to give like certain looks or different tells or intel from what he might have had from the fight there but maybe there's some benefit there to some degree because like a training partner is familiar with the next opponent oh no i asked i asked um yeah, I like all the input I can get. I fucking, man, I like to know everything about my opponent. I went so far as to message up Eric Wilson. Okay. And, uh, because I couldn't find their last fight. And, um, I just found a highlight video of their last fight. So I messaged up Eric, and then, um, Eric said he had the fight of their last one. Because I, like, I'm fucking, I'm such a technician. I want to see how this guy moves, how he sets things up. Every little pattern I'm studying so I can set it up and game plan through the whole camp. Um, so then I posted, he didn't get back to me at first, and then I posted that I'm fighting him, and then Eric actually hit me up, gave me the fight, so I was able to study him, and then Eric actually was telling me little details on what he felt in the fight, like, fuck, I was supposed to fight Eric Goss before, and that guy is cool, and he's tough as fuck, but, uh, yeah, he was giving me input on what he thought I could do to him, and, um, he watched my last fight, and just, like, solid guy, man, but, um, yeah, no, I studied him a lot, and, uh, his last three fights, like, him, Ty, I got... Eric, the Eric Wilson fight, the Gabe fight, and then Ty Wilson fight. I watched all those, and those were his last three. And um, he doesn't develop. Like, his game doesn't get really much stronger. It's kind of the same shit. So I'm I'm not expecting anything new. Especially, I, I just looked. He had a kid in October. So this guy's having some fucking bad sleeps. And um, I get, he owns the gym, I think he does. So kind of works a day job he's probably training once a day maybe twice a day but in the same time period 
You know what I mean? So he's not, like, I know he's not all in like I am. And he has a fucking newborn baby, so, and a whole gym to run. So he's, like, he's lacking there. I got, I got him right there, right? This is a full-time fucking career. I wake up, live, eat, breathe. This is what I do. So it's going to be a tough one for him. And I feel like, because I like, have him on social media as well, I feel like he did, like, a stint at Tiger Muay Thai, like, not really all that long ago. And you're talking about wanting to, you know, have more, like, of that striking showcase in this one. So, I mean, yeah, it could lend itself well stylistically to that sort of thing, perhaps. Oh, I'm wrestling, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. I'm letting him know I'm wrestling, too. Because, uh... With Gabe's fight, as I watched it, like, me and Gabe fucking matched up well in the grappling department. And once Gabe put him on his back, this boy did not get up. He does not have good get-ups. Um, so I developed my game on that. I'm going to put him on his back, tire his ass out, let him up, put him to sleep. Because, like, we wrestle. Like, I'm letting him know. Like, I come from a wrestling tradition. As he probably watched my last three fights. He knows I wrestle. But I'm a better striker, better grappler. I can beat him anywhere. But the smarter game plan would be to take him down, beat him up. That's what I'm going to do because I'm a smarter fighter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, such a great, you know, bit of like wrestling knowledge at Niagara, top team, and just like the Brock University wrestlers coming in historically. So that's always been great. But in talking about that being like an Ontario-centric team, I would think this would be a cool one in the sense of like there'd probably be a real partisan presence, like a lot of, you know, fans, friends, family in attendance and stuff like that. And I feel like you haven't fought in Ontario since that BTC St. Catharines card. So how are you feeling about all that? I'm pumped. Um, it's going to be good. It'll be nice to have a fight back at home. It's been uh, two fights now since I fought at home. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to put it on a show, get the fans going crazy like I do. Um, yeah. I see this fight kind of going like when I fought here in St. Catharines, actually. Take him down, beat him up, walk off, knock out. That's it. It'd be beautiful. Have the whole crowd going crazy. No, that's awesome, man. And then this last one isn't really a question so much, but just noticed you got a newer tat after the last time we were talking there, like a few months ago there, another, you know, great tribute and stuff like that to, you know, the grandmother and mother and stuff like that show, no great grandma and all that. So that's really awesome. I just thought that was, you know, cool to see, man. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. This whole year has been dedicated to her. Every fight from now on, the day I fight in my head, um, I'll, this is what I do. This is for her. She believed in me when I was a young kid. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep on bonding these guys with, she's, she's, like, in spirit, she's with me, so she was a fucking warrior herself. So with her behind me, like, it's not, I just love this shit. She knew I did, and I have fun when I'm in there. Just, my mindset's so positive. Win or lose a draw, I'm having fun, so it doesn't matter. We're going to war. Yeah, no, it's good you're having fun, because it's always fun watching from, like, a fan perspective, seeing you do your thing out there but i do want to be mindful of your time like i was kind of saying a bit earlier so to that point man is there anything you might want to like add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here tj um i just want to say thank you to my management team Ian fried niagara top team my coaches my teammates um everyone out there supporting me all my fans um just know i'm gonna take this guy out hopefully one more maybe another one after that take you to the big show and I really test my skills and um, show the world who I am and you better remember my name, my host, T. Shea Bethel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have fun doing it. It's a fucking incredible journey I'm on and I'm loving every second of it. Yeah, for sure. And the next chapter in that story unfurling December 16th and if anyone's in the greater Toronto area should definitely check out Unified MMA 48 Live. But if not, like we were saying, they can check it out on UFC Fight Pass if they happen to be out of the area. But I appreciate you making some time, man. Always great getting to talk to you before the different fights and everything. So thanks so much. And yeah, just looking forward to being there and checking out the fight. No, oh, thank you, brother. Always love uh, talking to you. Are you going to be at this one? Yeah, I'm coming back in like a bit under a week and I'm looking to be at that BTC card and yeah, the Unified. No, that'd be blessed. We'll maybe get one after the fight then. Oh yeah, sounds good. I always love that too, man. Thanks. Fucking right. Okay, good talking, brother.